Hello everyone and welcome back to another a very nice and a very exciting chess game from the history of chess. So in this chess game we have Labordene with the white pieces and his opponent is Alexander McDonnell. Uh, well Labordene was a very interesting chess player. He was uh, he was the first official world chess champion who defended his title in a match. So he played six matches with his close rival with his biggest rival Alexander McDonnell, six matches I repeat and I don't know if Gary Kasparov and Anatoly Karpov played six matches so they were great great rivals and okay so this chess game is from one of those matches uh, and Labordene was the most dominant and the strongest chess player in his era and Alexander McDonnell was the second strongest chess player uh, I have an interesting fact. Labordene only spoke French language and Alexander McDonnell only spoke English language. So they have never spoken anything with each other but that was not just because, because of the language barrier. Uh, that was not just because uh, they didn't know any common language but it was also because they never liked each other. So this is also an interesting fact between Labordene and Alexander McDonnell. The only word that, that they exchanged was check. <laughs> interesting, isn't it? So, okay. Uh, this is also an interesting fact. Uh, I was thinking that maybe you have never heard this, which is not very well known. Okay, so let's see what happened in this first chess game uh, that I'm going to show you between Labordene and and Alexander McDonnell. I showed a few other chess games between these two, but those chess games, uh, those videos uh, were videos with no commentary. There was only classical music at the background. So, okay, Labordene, who has the white pieces, starts the game with pushing the e-pawn, e4. So, we have simply the Italian game and the Evans Gambit, which is very common in the Romantic era of chess. This is not a surprise. So bishop takes on b4, c3, bishop goes back, and Labordene castled h6, and then d4. Developing the knight, capturing bishop takes on e5. So giving up the bishop, and then defending the bishop, and developing the queen. Actually pushing to the pawn and liberating the bishop would be an automatic move uh, for a modern chess master in this position. So pushing the pawn and liberating the bishop. This would be a better move. But okay, queen to e7 is also not so illogical. f4 and then checking the king and going after the throat. Knight from e to g4. Queen to e2 by Labordene, defending on knight to f2. But in this position, can you see a better move than queen to e2? Uh, what would you do in this position if you had the white pieces? Can you guess the next move for white? So actually Labordene missed an important opportunity. And in this position black is paying the price because of his premature attack. This is a perfect example of the premature attack by Alexander McDonnell. So okay, did you see the move? Actually that would be e5. e5 would be a much better move and if knight to f2 then rook takes knight a queen takes rook and then capturing the knight and you're going to get two minor pieces for the exchange and wrecking the pawn structure uh, in the king side and also white has better position better development uh, so if something like knight to e4 then we simply capture the knight knight to f2 capturing capturing and queen goes back and defending the back rank threat at the same time. So this is why in this position actually pushing the e-pawn would be better but Labordene is defending on f2 and then queen to h5. Alexander McDonnell is immediately going after Labordene's throat but Labordene is defending the checkmate threat with pushing the h-pawn h3 and black castled. Pushing the e-pawn e5 by Labordene and both knights is under attack. So if defending the knight, capturing this knight with queen, queen takes knight, so the h-pawn is pinned, pinning the e-pawn, rook to e8. But stepping aside, queen to f3, 
and again both knights are under attack so okay this chess game is not the most high quality chess game but don't forget that this chess game was played in 1834 in london england so okay chess has been advanced so much since then and we have queen to h5 and basically alexander mcdonald is losing a piece but he is still not resigning he has few tricks in this position he pushed upon so black is a piston developing the knight rook in this is completely losing uh, for black bishop to d2 and alexander mcdonald tried a very funny trick he played knight to f2 and we have king to h2 what happens if capturing the knight then queen takes on f2 <laughs> the rook is pinned that would be very funny <laughs> But okay, Labordene played king to h2, bishop takes on h3, but simplifying the game, this time queen takes on f2, the rook is not pinned, exchanging, and then at the end of the day, white has three minor pieces for the exchange for the rook, and black also has two extra pawns, so it looks like this is all over, but uh, McDonald is trying his chances, so in this position, Rook takes on g6 is a possibility because this f pawn is pinned king over and then f5. Labordene is breaking in. g5. Well, obviously, if g takes on f5, what happens then? Then bishop takes on h6. Only move. And then checking the king. Only move. Capturing the rook. And this is all over for black. Black is losing by force. So pushing the pawn g5 and then pushing the pawn again. White is going to break in and there is nothing black can do. This is why Alexander McDonald resigned. A very nice, interesting chess game between these two great rivals uh, from 1834. They say they never liked each other uh, because of some, uh, some reason that I don't know. Uh, but... They were buried side by side at the Kensal Green Cemetery in London, England. And again, they played six long matches. And their matches, all of their games, all of their matches are very interesting, very entertaining and quite instructive. You might say, okay, this was not a high quality chess game. But with the mistakes of the masters from the past, we will learn from them. We will learn from the mistakes and blunders and... We will take lessons from them. So, okay, let me show you the possible continuation. Black can try rook to e8 and then capturing the pawn. Knight to b5. Rook to e5. Knight takes on c7. Rook takes on f5. Bishop takes on g5. And this is all over for black. White is easily winning, as you can see, uh, materially and positionally. So, thank you very much for watching. And I hope to see you next time. Take care and bye-bye.